If you want to improve as a guitarist, the most important thing to work on is playing with purpose and intention. No matter what musical style you play and no matter how proficient you are at the instrument, you want to make clear and deliberate choices about what you're going to play and how you're going to play it. My name is Jack Roosh and in this lesson I'm going to give you a valuable exercise that helped me learn the fretboard and start playing with intent. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Let's get into it. One of the keys to improving as a musician is working on your fundamentals. Having a solid grasp on things like chord inversions, triads, scales, and arpeggios can be a really valuable way to learn the fretboard and tell your fingers where they need to go to play what you're hearing. But it's also really important to not let those fundamental things dictate what you play. After all, we're playing music, right? We want to play soulful and melodic lines. So these fundamental things should be viewed as blueprints for mapping out the fretboard. And when you look at it that way, they can be a really valuable way for learning the fretboard and to get you start playing with more intent. So we're going to go over an arpeggio exercise for playing the blues. Now, a blues is a really good place to start, I think, because it's relatively simple. We've just got three chords, and they're all the same quality of chord, meaning they're all dominant seventh chords. So for this, we're going to be working in the key of A, and our one chord is an A7, our four chord is a D7, and our five chord is an E7. Now, this exercise is exactly the thing I worked on years ago to learn my arpeggio shapes. And connecting these shapes together really helped me connect the dots across the fretboard and helped me to start make sense of things like the cage system and all these chord inversions and arpeggios and scales we have laid out all across the fretboard. So what we're going to do is map out the chord tones to the three chords of a blues in each of the five positions derived from the cage system. Now, if you're not familiar with the cage system, I'll put a link down in the description um, on a detailed lesson on that. But basically, we're going to break the fretboard down into five positions. And in each of those five positions, we're going to play three arpeggios. One for A7, one for D7, and one for E7. This is going to give us all our important chord tones that we're going to want to target in our solos to outline these changes. So as we go through this, I'll play each arpeggio in each position and show you how they tie together. And then afterwards, I'll play a short solo demonstrating how I would use those arpeggio shapes in that one position to make musical ideas. So this first set of arpeggios is going to happen down in this position between the second fret and the fifth fret. And our A chord voicing right here is this G shape from the cage system. Basically, we're just taking an open G chord and moving it up a whole step. And where we have open strings, we're going to bar. So we get this chord shape as sort of our framework for this uh, position. Now, our arpeggio in this spot is going to start with the flat 7, G, move up to the root A, then the third C sharp, then the fifth E, then flat 7, root, third, fifth, flat 7, root. So that's our A dominant 7 arpeggio shape. Now the next part of this exercise is to find our D7 arpeggio shape in this same position. So for that, we're going to move to the C chord voicing from the cage system. Again, we're just taking an open C cowboy chord and moving it up a whole step. And that's the framework for our D7 voicing. So the lowest note in this arpeggio is the third F sharp down on the low E string. Then we have the fifth A, then the flat seven C, 
then the root, D, and then third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth. So that uh, arpeggio shape is like this. So now we can move from A7 to D7. A7. To D7. And we can do it descending. Here's A7. And D7. Right, and now the third chord of our blues is the E7, and for this I'm using this voicing, which is just like a D shape moved up a whole step, and I'm playing the third in the bass for this voicing. So our E7 right here is going to start on the third, G sharp, then move up to the fifth B, then the flat 7 D, and then the root E. And then we have the third again, which we can either play here or here. I like to play it here. So then we get, there's the third, then the fifth, flat seventh, root third. So that E7 arpeggio shape is like this. Now we can move between all three of these chords. There's A7, D7, and E7. Right, so this is the exercise, mapping out these chord tones to the chords in the tune we're playing over, and finding how they all lay out in one position. That way you can really practice this one position at a time and tie it together and really map this out all over the fretboard and see it in its complete form wherever you are on the neck. So now, the next part of this exercise is I'm going to limit myself to this one position and I'm going to play a solo over the 12 bar form and I'm going to use these arpeggio shapes as uh, target notes to find chord tones to outline the different changes of the tune. <laughs> So it's really important to see and visualize the underlying chord shapes uh, when you're working on these arpeggios. It'll really help you connect it to uh, the chord that you're playing over. So this next set of arpeggios is going to fall over this A chord shape, this D chord shape, and this E chord shape. Right? And so the arpeggio for A7 right here starts on the root A then the third, fifth, flat seven. Root, third, fifth, flat seven, and root. So you can see the notes of this chord fall right in that arpeggio shape, but we're playing it around, around it a little bit, so we play all the notes of the arpeggio in sequence. Root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, Right, so that's our A7 arpeggio in this position. Now as we move up to this D7, again, we're gonna start on the lowest note we have available on the low E string in this position. So in that case, it's the fifth A right here. And then we have the flat seven, and then the root. And then the third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, all of D7 right here. So now we can move from A7 to D7. And again, it's really important to learn this across all six strings so that you have a totally complete picture 
of all those chord tones in that position. So wherever you're soloing, whatever strings you're playing on, you can always find the nearest chord tone to the next chord in the progression. And finally, our E7 in this position is going to start on the third here, then the fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth. So that's the exact same position um, that we use down here for our D chord, right? We played the same exact shape once before. Now we're just moving it up. So that's the nice thing about this is that there's actually only five shapes. So you're going to repeat yourself a lot. The idea is just being able to see it in that position. So if I'm playing something in this spot and I want to get to the notes of an E7, I'm not moving up uh, out of position um, because I don't know where the notes are in that one position. I can move up if I choose to, but I can also play just inside those chords right in one spot. So I can play there and then move seamlessly between those two chords in one position. So now I'll play a quick solo in this position using these arpeggio shapes um, to target chord tones and outline the changes of a blues. So our third position is going to revolve around this A chord, this D chord, and this E chord. So shapes we've already seen before, we're now repeating them, um, but over different chords in a different part of the neck, right? So this uh, A shape is similar to this E shape we played down here, right? We're going to start on the third, fifth, flat seven root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, right? So and you really want to get this hopefully down to the point where you can play it very fluidly like that without having to really think about which note comes next. You just can get to it very quickly. That's an important part of actually being able to use this stuff in the moment when you're improvising. Um, you need to be able to see this stuff and call upon it really quickly. So that's our A shape there. Um, and then that would move to this D shape, which is like, you know, our open position G chord moved up, right? And so there we have flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root. So again, from A7, to D7, right? And you can do different things like go up one arpeggio, and then down another arpeggio. There's a million ways you can practice these things. But the idea at the beginning is just to map out these arpeggios in each position and be able to see where these chords uh, are in one position on the neck, right? So now we have our E shape right here, which again, we've played before this shape. And this is gonna start on the fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven. So, transitioning between these three chords, we get A7. To D7. To E7. 
seven. Right, so now I'll play a quick solo over the blues form, limiting myself to this one position and using these arpeggios specifically to target chord tones as the chords change. group of arpeggios is going to fall around this A chord shape, this D chord shape, and this E chord shape, right? Again, the shapes we've seen before, but now we're moving them around to different parts of the neck uh, to cover these different chords, right? So our A shape is going to start on the third here, then the fifth, then the flat seven, then the root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, so. All right, and then our D shape here is gonna start on the root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root. Again, so from A, to D. And then our E shape, based around this uh, chord voicing, is going to start flat 7, D, to the root E, to the 3rd, 5th, flat 7, root, 3rd, 5th, flat 7, root. So again, we can practice just moving between these arpeggios, right? So A7, D7 to E7. Okay, so now, just like I did before, I'll play a quick solo over the form and limit myself to this one position. Um, so, you know, seeing these chord changes and seeing these arpeggios, how they lay out over one another, is super crucial when you want to seamlessly transition between the chords. And the better you know this stuff, the easier it is to improvise this way. Okay, so here's a quick solo and then we'll move on to the final position. Okay, so this last position falls around this A chord, this D chord, and this E chord, which if we played down in open position would be our open position chords, All right? But now we're playing them up here at the 12th fret. So now we get this A shape, we get this arpeggio, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven. All right, so this is the exact same, same shape we played down here for E and down here for D. So it, once you learn these shapes um, and memorize these five shapes, it's really just a matter of seeing them moving around. Like this is gonna be the same shape here for A as it is here for D and as it is here, or here for E and here for D. So it's just a matter of sort of recalibrating uh, these shapes for where you find yourself on the fretboard. Um, and it takes a little while to get this going if you're new to these arpeggio shapes. But 
once you kind of learn a few of them, it, it starts to get quicker and a little bit easier to see. So our A shape again. Right, and then that's gonna transition to, uh, let's see, this D shape right here. So that's third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third. All right, so from A7, to D7. And then finally, our E7 right here. Root, third, fifth, flat seven, root, third, fifth, flat seven, root. So again, we can transition between these three chords. So you'll want to practice this stuff enough so that you get to the point where you can move through these arpeggios pretty seamlessly, right? If I start at A7 to D7 to E7 and then right back to A7 to D7 to E7. Right, that's the whole idea, is to get this stuff comfortable enough where you don't really have to think about it, but you are aware of what notes you're playing of the chord, like where the thirds are, where the sevenths are, where the fifths are. Right, that's a really important part of this. Um, but yeah, this is just an exercise to kind of practice mapping out chord tones. So now I'll play the final solo out of this position. Um, just limit myself to that position and play one final solo. And again, all of the tabs for these five little solo examples will be up on my Patreon page. So working through these five positions can take a while to get under your fingers, especially if you're new to practicing arpeggios. But this type of practice of mapping out the chord tones to the changes you're playing over is really crucial if you want to outline the changes in your solo. Um, this is going to give your solos a more deliberate and intentional sound that we're all looking for. And the great thing about this is this type of practice can be modified to fit any tune. Uh, just change the chord sequence and change the chord qualities to fit the song that you're playing over. All right, so if you want to find the tabs to the five solos that I demonstrated uh, in this lesson, head over to my Patreon page. And don't forget to look down in the description for all my different courses. Those are great ways to support this channel. And if you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. And uh, once again, thank you for watching. And until next time, happy practicing.